Good afternoon, everyone. So let's start. And today, our goal is to finish this leap bridge concrete girder design example using PCEF girder and also evolve New York DOT permit truck truck. And I sent an email last Friday about the second test. Okay, so test information. Take a look at the email for information of the test and also uh, I want to show you some resources to review the second test. And for second test, we will cover we will cover influence lines. Okay, cover influence lines. And the first problem will be an influence line problem using level of distribution factor and dynamic impact. Okay, so this is the example that we did in class a few weeks ago and hopefully that you have the notes for this example and this is a good example to review the test and homework number three also a good resource for you to review the class example and homework number three solutions already been posted on my courses and for the second second problem will be the deck design okay so it will be the deck design and Deck design include interior design and overhand design. And you need to understand the concept. Okay. And for the interior design, we'll focus on equivalent strip width. You need to know the concept of equivalent strips. And this is the table that you will use to calculate equivalent strips for live load. And this is interior part and overhand is a different equation. So just a review this table and also the class notes. Okay, so I give you the class notes about the interior design. It's a pretty detailed procedure for interior design and refer to that as well as your homework number four to review the equivalent strip width concept. And also we have this table A4-1, and this is the maximum live load moment per unit width. So this table is give you the maximum moment on one foot strip. So I already marked here and refer to the class notes markup I posted on my courses. So this table already consider equivalent strip width. And if you use this table to figure out the maximum live load moment, and this is already on just one full strip. Okay, so you need to know how to use this table to figure out the maximum positive moment and negative moment. And this S is a girder spacing or deck span length. Okay, so this is table. This two things, this two table are for interior deck design and for the overhand design. And we have the class notes for overhand design. You need to know that the overhand must be stronger than the barrier design and under the collision load. And we can sacrifice the barrier and save the deck overhand. So deck overhand cannot fail before the barrier. And when we do the deck overhand design, in order to make sure it's stronger than barrier, we need to check three design cases and three design sections. And you need to know what are those three design cases and where are those critical sections or design sections for the overhand. Okay, and this is the notes markup already posted on my courses and also refer to your homework number four and the spreadsheets. And this overhand part, we won't do any of those calculation. Instead, I want you to understand the concept. At least you know that how to design overhand. So just describe the procedure, describe the design cases you need to check and so on. So that's the second problem, okay? And for the test, we will post the test on my courses And for, for the test, 
I already put the announcement for midterm test number two. And for the test, I will post the test under this content tab and this folder called midterm test number two. Okay, so on Friday, you will go to here and I will put a PDF file here and PDF file here for test number two. And one file is for a test and the other is called figure and tables. And this is for your reference, like a bridge plan and actual tables and give you um, some reference right here. Okay, so this, you will see the documents for midterm test number two here on Friday at 11.50, okay? And after you finish your test, you need to take a picture and scan it, change that to PDF file, or or you can, if you cannot have a change that, you cannot change that to PDF, and you can just send a picture of your test and put into this job box, midterm test number two job box by 1.30, okay, by 1.30. So just uh, um, refer to the announcement, refer to the announcement, and also the email, post them on courses. This gives you the instruction for test number two, okay. So, now back to the example, okay? Back to the example. So now we want to finish this example. And um, for this, since we already go over um, the, the steps using the Ashto Beam and HL93 Lab Load, and this one, I use a faster um, pace, okay. So this exactly same span length and bridge have the same span length width and same framing, six girders, nine foot spacing, overhands three and a half feet and deck is eight. So everything's same except that this time we want to use a different type of girders, PCEF, which is the New York DOT specified gutter and we also need to include New York DOT permit truck in addition to HIO 93. So other things exactly same. Okay. And first we need to determine so what size of the gutter we were going to use. And based on the span length here, 100 foot, and we use this guidelines for the superstructure depths and we have pre-stretched concrete, precast I-beams and depths approximately equals to 0 0.045 of the span length. So we use that for simple span. Based on that, we can calculate, we can calculate the rough depths of the gutter and based on the span to depth ratio, we get the depths roughly 0 0.04 four five times 100 foot, 4.5 feet and 54 inches. And then go to this New York DOT pre-stress concrete details and check that which gutter has the similar depth as 54, okay? So based on the depth, the depth right here, the 55 means 55 inches. The total depth is 55 inches and we have 39, 47, 55, 63, okay. So we found that this 55 meters requirement of depth to span ratio and very close to 54. And that is our option based on span to depth ratio. So we use this one, PCEF 55, identify the, the type of gutter and then, based on bridge width, and we can calculate the number of lanes. Okay, so this bridge will have four lanes, four traffic lanes, framing six girder and nine foot spacing, and those overhand three and a half, deck eight, and deck overlay 36, utility five, and we can combine this two and get 41 pound per square foot and equals to 0 0.041 kip per square foot. Okay, so that's, we can input that into the load part. And deck forms, 
steam police deck forms eight pound per square foot and times the girder spacing and we get 72 and equals to 0 0.072 k per linear foot. Median four feet, feet by nine inches and we can calculate this composite DC total composite DC equals to 0 0.150 k per cubic foot times the cross section of the median four feet times nine inches over 12 and get 0 0.5, 0 0.45 k per linear foot. That's the total composite DC. Bridge railing, we have 1.5 foot width and the weight is 100 pound per linear foot each side. Live load, HL93 and permit truck, New York DOT permit truck. Concrete initial strength six, final strength 8.5. And we have 0.6 inches, 270 KSI low relaxation strength, intermediate di diaphragm using 14 by 99 and spacing is 20 feet. Okay, so this information, this very similar to the previous example, except that we use a different type of girder and include New York DOT permit truck. Okay, so, and just a refresh your memory for the permit truck. And we have for permit truck, we have 11 axles, okay, 11 axles. And there's axle spacing and axle load. And we need to specify this permit vehicle in the lead bridge concrete software. And we also need to specify the girder into the lead bridge concrete beam section library. Okay, so now let's go to the software. Okay, so project name, I cut 100 foot simple span. Bridge and designed by your name. And for this date, I put New York and description use PCEF. I got her. And HL93 and New York DOT permit truck. Okay, so 52 feet wide and nine gutters, six gutters at nine foot spacing. Three point five overhand, eight inches deck. Okay, so just some basic information I put here based on the bridge, and then just check the design code ASHTO and you unit is English. Okay, analysis option, just choose none. We are not integral abutment bridge, not the seismic design, so we just choose none, and then go to, so I just first, I save, okay, so just, I save this. Okay, so enter this PCEF, I called 100 foot PCEF. Okay, save. And then after you put this basic job job information, project information, and then go to superstructure, okay? So we'll skip the geometry part for the front page and go to superstructure. So under the superstructure tab, we'll input geometry. So go to superstructure and choose precast pre-stress concrete girder option. And the project information will carry here and I don't need to re-input this job information. 
Okay, just keep everything the same and just check here design code. I will use the latest LRFD8 and no state specification, US unit, and not the flare girder, and span type simple span. Okay, so everything look good for the project and go to geometry. So under this precast pre stress girder tab, we need to do the input in order project geometry material loads analysis and a beam so we'll stop at a beam we won't use this software to do the deck design okay so next geometry and for geometry and we will put the overall width of the bridge 54 no skew angle so put zero and zero here and the curve data is 1.5 for the bridge rails each side. Lane data is automatically calculated based on bridge width and railing data. And the topping data is for the bridge deck. We have eight inches effective thickness and no sacrificial thickness, put zero. Hunch thickness here, we put one inch, which is the minimum. And this part topping data is used that for moment inertia calculation. So we do, want, we do not want to overestimate the contribution of the hunch. So here we just put one inch minimum and then put the remaining additional hunch thickness as a load and then put that in the load tab. Okay. And the hunch width, instead of doing the manually, we use, we check this auto set hunch width. And after you check this auto hunch, how to set hunch with option and based on the selection of the girder size and this program will automatically set the girder width same width as the top flange of the girder. Okay. Then the span data, span length, precast length is span length plus nine inches times two. Okay. So the total length of the girder during production is 101.5 and release span. So we built the bridge release span is same as the precast length. So when you cut the strand and release span is the same. So you do not put additional support. You do not put additional support to reduce the span length. Usually we just take the same length as the girder production length. And the bearing to bearing is 100. That's for the, the final stage and when bridge in use and span length of the bridge is 100 foot. And now let's take a look at this input. Okay, so we find 52 feet wide and 1.5 feet each side of the barrier and 49 feet of the clear roadway, eight inches stack, which is good. And now um, we want to do this, the gooder input. I check this library and unfortunately, and this gooder section, so right here, so you need to go to this beam section, this give you the beam section library. That's usually the typically used beam sections is there, but unfortunately the PCEF55 is not there in the library. So I click that. So it's a no beam defined, continue anyway, yes. And enter this beam section library and go to I girders. And there's a typical size, okay. And I check that and find that there's no PCEF55. And um, I add this yesterday because um, I find that it's not. Uh, I just just do that because I need to prepare this lecture. So this PCEF 55 New York is not there, okay? So the closest, the closest is a PCEF 5548 that if you check your own software and this one should be there, okay? So, but it's not New York DOT 55, it's Maryland. 55 is similar but not same size. So I first, in order to add, in order to add this section, 
this New York duty section first, I, I choose that and check and use modify. Okay, so I click modify. And for modify, I'd figure out this is not the same, not same dimension as our 55 gutter. So I change that to PCEF 55 in order to be different. Okay, I put this New York and and description is New York DOT PC EF 55 for description. So in the future, if I add this to my own library and in the future I can design that just just use the gutter size already set up in the library. So I don't need to do this every time in the future. Okay, so after I set up this edit section in my library, um, I can use that in the future. And top flange, top flange. So let's take a look at this section. Top flange is 47. Okay, I just input here first and F4 is four. And F3, I will put 1.5 and this is the wide top flange. Maximum thickness is seven and a half. Fillet width is two. And bottom flange width is 32. And F1 is nine and F2 is 60.5. This is exactly the same. F2 is, um, yes, it's uh, uh, 6.5, okay, so this is same. And and stamp is seven, H is 55. Okay, so I want this dimension based on those given information, I based on the size right here, okay. The top flange is 47 inches and the bottom is 32 and the web seven, then the depth is 55, which is same. And this F1 is four, nine and 6.5 is three plus three and a half. Okay, so this part is 6.5 and wide flange instead of doing this 1.5 plus two inches equals 3.5, I just use 1.5 and then add this two inches fillet into that wet flange input fillet. Okay, so I just use this 1.5 dimension. Into the gutter section input. Okay, so just uh, take a look at this F44 and F3. I use 1.5, which is the smaller dimension, exclude the fillet. And then the maximum I use 4 plus 1.5 plus 2 inches fillet and get 7.5. And then put fillet width 2 inches. And bottom, and we get 32, which is 2 feet 8 inches and nine, six and a half. And this this exactly the same, okay? This is the same as the dimension. And stem, we only have seven inches for the New York DOT PCE have PCEF 55, H is 55, okay? So after that, since we already update all these values, means that the section properties already change, okay? Instead of doing the user input to manually revise those, I would recommend just put, put your mouse here, dimensions. And this program will automatically calculate the moment inertia and center gravity area and so on. So I check this number, it's not significantly different from the table that in the New York DOT pre-stress concrete details. And I think that acceptable, just use the 
the program calculated number. And if you prefer, and you can do the user input and use the table value and put this area and moment inertia here into this box. Okay, so for example, you can go down and this give you the area. And for my calculation, and I compare that, um, it's not significantly different. So I just use the program calculate number. And if you want to be, be really accurate and you can use the table value and put manually put those area, moment inertia and center gravity, okay. Okay, so I just put dimensions and this area is slightly larger than the table value. The table value is 867 and this 881. So by increase the area means that when we calculate the dead load, it will be a little bit overestimate the dead load of the beam. Okay, and I checked the moment inertia, so which is used to calculate the deflection and this moment inertia um, is ma actually match the table value pretty well. Okay, so just use the dimensions option and then go down, okay, before you do the okay and go down to the template and just define where you will put your strand. Okay, so this template right here. And for template, I need to refer to New York DOT detail in order to put the strand location and go back to this PDF file and right here, this gives you the location of the strand and I will make this a little bit bigger so you can see clearly the location of the strand. Okay, so for here we find that the maximum, the maximum for the bottom layer is 12 straight plus, plus two dripped. So it's 14, 14 and 14. And next, the first row here, the maximum is eight. Okay, and we need to um, put a strip strand location and maximum 10. So this is possible location of the drift strand. And based on that, okay, so based on that, and we can determine that where is the location of strand. And we also know that the space is two inches vertically and horizontally. And for this one, the, the distance to the bottom of the beam is two point seven five inches from bottom of the beam. And then after you set it to the bottom layer and the remaining layer spacing will be two inches. Okay, so just based on this spacing, I will define the template for the strand pattern and then go to the top and to the stripped, the dripped strand. And we notice the, the top most dripped strand will be at least five one eighths of inch below the top of flange in order to make of a space of the top rebars. Okay, so based on that requirement, and I need to think about that the, uh, the top most of drip strand, at least five one eighths of inch below the top flange, the top of the top flange, and spacing for dripped is two inches. Okay, so those the requirement for New York DOT strand location. Then I just go back to this software and for template I noticed that okay the number bars match okay so number ma match for the the first row and the second row but third row we should have 14 and this row has eight because I need to adjust that. But before that, I find that the bottom layer is only two inches from the bottom. So I will do this. Adjust, okay, adjust all height. Okay, so we'll just 
the height 0.75 inches up. All those lines, because the bottom will be 2.75 from the bottom of the girder. So I will just all first use this 0 0.75. Okay, so now I have bottom layer, 2 point, 2 point, um, seven five, and second layer, 4.75, and so on. And then the number, the number of, of bars, we have 14, 14 good, and this changes that to 14. And this first layer will be maximum eight, and then go down for this drift strand at least at least five and eighth inch below the top flange with the 55 inches so I will delete this row this cannot be the the row for drift strand and this one can cannot work and 48.75 and 55 minus 48.75 equals to um, equals to um, see so just 55 minus 45.75 and equals to 6.25 okay so this require meet the requirement greater than greater than five and eight so I keep that then I just say okay Before I click OK, actually, um, I can delete. Okay, so delete all of those since we already have. Delete rows. And then click OK, and then say OK, and save. So after you add a New York DOT section, and make sure that you click save, then this section will be saved into the library. And click OK, and close. Okay, so now we already defined this, and go to this beam number one and beam ID go down this list we just do this PCEF 55 New York and this one and distance 3.5 and then copy row And this one, because of the flange is pretty large, okay, it's so pretty large. I put seven, uh, 3.5, the spacing when I copy, and I will revise that because spacing is nice. So I just click OK and see that means this program figure out that it's impossible that, that put two beams at 3.5 spacing. So I put nine there and then do copy row four times. Okay, so then we finish this beam, six beam lines. Okay, so click update. And then go to the materials. Down with geometry and go to materials. And for materials and go to release, we have 6.0 KSI, just one day strength. Final 28 strength is eight and a half there and this number electricity will be updated based on the strength of the concrete and that concrete is 4.5 which is good and we don't change the power sum ratio thermal coefficient of the concrete and rebars double check this is 29 ks 29,000 ksi and fy is grid 60 rebar 
citric acid is good. And again, transformation of steel, we won't check those. And um, so if you check those, they will count this pre-stressing strand and rebars moment inertia contribution to the entire beam moment inertia contribution. So I won't do that um, to be conservative, okay? So this part, no other things change on the left side and then on the right side, pre-stressing strand and we'll use use six over 10 to 70K low relaxation, okay? And first six over 10 is the diameter of, of each wire and strands LL represents low relaxation. And then pattern dripped street. We always use this combination, a stripped and street combination for eye girders, okay? And depressed point, so this is the dripping, the hard point for the dripped strand is a point four. So again, just refresh your memory for that. It's right here. And so right here, okay? So when we do the drip strand, this is New York DOT detail, and we have 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and this portion, okay? So we just use that for input, okay? So this 0 0.4 and mid span increment um, is, is two inches for the, for the strand spacing and debounding length increment 24 and ratio, that is just the, the ASHTO specified recommended ratio. We won't change that. Then down with the materials, okay. And then go to the load, okay. So just update the model just frequently to save the data. And for load, again, we will use this wizard to generate the typical load and then just manually input, input some additional loads, wizard, and barrier, left barrier as point one, which is 100 foot, 100 pound per linear foot, and right barrier, point one, key per linear foot, and no curbs, and future wearing surface, point zero four one key per, per square foot, okay? So this is 36 plus five pound per square foot for the wearing surface and no sidewalk, stay in place deck form as 0 0.072 keep per linear foot. And that's point to this typical interior deck form, okay? So um, no other input, no right sidewalk, and we just click okay. And this will automatically generate some composite DC and DW and precast DC. The self weight of the girder and the deck already be included in in the calculation. So when we run the analysis, so you don't need to input that load separately for the girder and deck. Okay, so but now we need to manually input. So deck span span one, and at first I will input this median. Okay, the median composite DC line load and the magnitude is 0 0.45 k per linear foot, and this is for median. 4 feet by 9 inches composite DC. And then beam span number 1, and girder 1, and precast DC, that's non-composite DC, and then line load and the magnitude, the magnitude will be right here, okay? So the magnitude of the hunch is two additional, two inch additional hunch and we'll use point 150 and times the top flange width Top flange is three feet, 
11 inches, so 3.92 feet, and times the thickness, 2, two inches over 12, and get 0 0.098. Keep a linear fault. OK, so back to the software. And the magnitude, 0 0.0. Point zero nine eight. Keep a linear foot. I put this two inches. Additional hunch. Okay. Then this will be on each beam. Okay. So just a copy to each beam. Copy row. Copy row, copy row, copy row, copy row, so just five times. And then I just change this to two, three, four, five, and six. OK, so this accounts for this, the hunch on each gutter. And then go down, I down with this dead load input, and go down to this di diaphragm. And diaphragm, I use wizard, OK? and so the wizard is span one and location zero magnitude we use 14 w14 by 99 so the weight will be 99 pound per linear foot skew angle zero and then just do copy row and location 20 and then copy row 40 and copy row 60 and copy row 80, and copy row 100. And finish this diaphragm location and weight, and just click OK. They will automatically calculate the weight on each location of the diaphragm and as a point load on the girder. Okay. And then live load for RSA, so we don't include that, and temperature use uniform, and design live load use, check this include live load deflection, and for the New York DOT, this part already HL93, and we need to input New York DOT permit vehicle, and New York DOT permit vehicle is not here, and again that I um, added this yesterday, okay, yesterday, so for your program, it shouldn't be there. So I just want to show you that how to input, okay, the permit vehicle. In this live load, in this live load library, click that. And then go to permit vehicles. And then usually if there is uh, some permit vehicle there and you can choose, okay, it's like California and Colorado permit vehicle all already there, and you do need to define that. But for um, New York DOT permit vehicle, it's not there. You need to define that, okay? So for example, I just add, show you that how to do that, and then you do add, and ID. So this one, I just called New York permit truck okay description I just New York DOT permit vehicle and so there's no additional uniform load for this truck and first axle intensity is 10 okay so let's take a look at this permit vehicle right here. We have 10, then two 18s, three 23s, then five 21s. The spacing here, nine, and four spaces for 10, and four spaces for, and this is the permit vehicle layout, okay, layout. I will follow that, and this is the first one. This is the first axle that the input, and according to that, According to this, and we can input the remaining axles. Okay, so we can remaining axles by input the axle load and spacing.
So first is 10. And then Okay. And the will then we'll do it in zero row and number one, okay, this is the first and number next one will be um, 18 and the maximum spacing for nine and minimum also nine, okay. No increment and then uh, we will copy row and put 18, but this time is four, four, copy row, and this will be 23, and 23, and 23, okay. So that's, is the 23, 323, space of four, okay. And next the copy row, and change that to 21. Spacing is 10. And then copy row, change the spacing to 4. And then copy row, copy row, copy row, 5, 21, space is 4. Okay, so this is the permit track. You can check. You can check a permit track, axle load and spacing based on the sketch right there. Okay, and just click OK. And save. After you add this New York permit vehicle and you see that description right there, and you just save. And saved, okay, and close. Then you can go down to this list. I find the New York DOT, New York State Permit Vehicle, I just defined to the right and right here, and seat permit vehicle. That's it, okay? So we down with the load input. Then go to analysis. And analysis will check one thing, okay? So analysis factors and um, for the factors, load factor right here. Load factor and we will check this strength one included and strength two. We need to check here included. Okay, included strength two because you have permit track. Make sure you check this. This is not automatically checked. You have to add that and click OK. And design parameters and for the the losses and this number, seventy five percent for New York. Okay, so this is pretty good because we already did this last time. We find the location seventy five is a good estimation and just click OK. And magic button, run analysis. And after that, go to the beam. OK, go to the beam. And for this beam, exterior beam, strength pattern. And first do the auto design, current beam, OK. And after the auto design, I just noticed one spot is for the release stress. So it will be fixed by using hard strand. And I noticed that this one has a negative um, deflection to see if we can fix that, okay? So I will put this street strand maximum 12 based on that. And then I will add the third row to eight. Okay, and then just to 10, okay, and um, still negative, just to the maximum number, 12. Okay, so now I can fix the deflection, it's been positive now, so which is good, and, but for the strip strand, I need to fix to this red spot right here, and for the drip strand, I will put to the top. Okay. And um, the top will be six. Okay. And then um, I will add a drip strand. 
2.44 and 2.75 and 2. Okay, so now I add another drift strand and figure out that this red thing gone. Okay, which is good after I add that. And this deflection is positive 0 0.451, which is good. Okay, so this design is pretty clean layout of the strand. I click OK. And you can see the strand pattern. Okay, and I already, I want to use this strand pattern for all the girders and go back and copy to our beams and click OK. And then check the interior girder strand pattern and make sure there's no red spot and also check the deflection and the interior get positive point too, which is very good. It's still positive, I click OK. So this design is very sound. Okay, so um, after that, so if you have have class, you can leave, but I want to finish that because I record this video, I want to finish that, okay? So um, next is the rebar pattern. I just click this rebar pattern and you find this one is uh, um, strength two is the blue line and strength one is the red line. So strength two is pretty high, means that under this New York DOT permit vehicle and shear force is much larger than strength one. Okay, so, and for the number of legs, I put two, and first I will try number four, okay? I will try number four bars, and based on the requirement, just go to this, explain for New York DOT, next page, um, we have typical size is number four. And you see that this is number four, web stirrups, okay? So this is number four. And we will try the typical size first. And I put the number four and spacing first put three and extend into the deck. And from start point, like zero to 1.5, we do it six spaces and after that, you notice that is the strength. Below the requirement, okay? And this one is, is not good, means that if you use number four as three inches, doesn't work. Okay, so we already use three inches and doesn't work. And the way that I can fix that is to use a larger size, okay? You to larger size and then I just want to do another design, try to do this, okay. So I will do the stir up by doing number five at three inches, six spaces. And see that it works, okay. And go back to, to that, change that to number five. And after do that, we figure out that number five is over design. It's like, you know, that significantly higher. I find it significantly higher than this, this requirement and over design. And then I will change that to four inches. And to two feet. Okay, and see that it's reasonable. Now is the reasonable range. Then I can do this fix, okay? So I find this too large and use number five at four, six spaces. So, so four times six, 24 inches, and I have zero to two feet. And then do number four at four inches and six spaces. Then we have four times six, another 24. So it's two feet to four feet. Then number four at nine inches, six spaces. And I got nine, okay, so this, 
first try six inches, number four add six inches and six spaces, and get six times six equals to 36 inches equals three feet. And number four, at nine inches, six spaces. And I got nine inches times six, 54 inches, and it equals to 4.5 feet. So this is four to seven feet, and the remaining is seven to 11, Five feet. Then after that, number four at the 12 for the remaining. Okay, so that is the plan. So put that, and then we to do number 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 four at four inches, and from two to four and then copy number four and use six inches from four to seven. And then insert okay so next we'll use nine inches from seven to 11.5 and then insert to 12 inches for the remaining. So I just put 91 here and then make symmetrical. Do automatic design. And now I find the green line is above the blue line. So meet the requirement, which is good. So accept this one, copy to all beams. Click OK and OK. And then check the interior stir wrap design. And click interior gutter, stir wrap pattern, and just make this bigger. And I find that, OK, just by looking at the green line, it's still above the blue line means the stir up design meet the strength requirement. I just click OK. So it's OK. Now I finish this design and update. And now I want to generate report. OK, done with the example. OK, thank you for your time.